Yeah, so I was actually discussing uh, innovation with a CEO of a, a fairly large um, biodetection company in the Bay Area recently, and we were talking about where innovation comes from. And uh, it came up that all innovation comes from beer. And, and where that, I think, really comes from is that uh, all innovation comes from the moments where you have downtime and you're not thinking about the problem in the traditional sense. As soon as you think about the way that everybody else is doing it, you're no longer innovating. DNA tracks is a safe and effective method to um, tag materials so that we can look at how air transports through a facility. That was its original Department of Defense funded application. And the, the idea was to be able to release something that the public can have uh, exposure to um, without any risk at all. So we use a food-based product and a small piece of biological material, DNA, um, that is non-biological in nature. So that's safe to approve, to release around people. And then we can release that material, uh, track it through a facility, and then identify where that material went from the DNA that's in the individual particles of sugar. So I got involved at the point of innovation. So right when the, the concept came up, um, I was actually the, the, one, of the, one of the two uh, initial inventors. And uh, that's when it began, from the initial idea. So the biggest problem is uh, uh, early career scientists is you have to figure out how to get these ideas funded. And I went uh, to a conference and I, I believe it was in Texas and I was told that if I could find an individual, um, Nai Wong, who's a program manager at DITRA, the Defense Threat Reduction Agency, and if I could convince him um, that that would be a successful way to get funding. So I had never met Nai before. I only knew that he was at this conference and I spent most of the week looking to find Nai throughout the conference. Uh, towards the last day of the conference, it was a final poster session, and I would purchased a uh, beer as I'd walked into the poster session, and I'd literally turned around, just had my beer open, and there was Nai Wong, and I gave him a 30 to 60 second pitch on what I wanted to do, and from that, he asked for a white paper, which uh, eventually funded the project. So it was just perfect timing, and uh, was someone who was willing to listen to the idea and uh, give it a shot. So once the, uh, the idea came, um, budgets and funding and scope had to be done. Uh, I was in biology and the team came together over the next year or two um, to include engineers, aerosol science experts, um, chemists as well. And we had to put a really multidisciplinary team together. And that's one of the great things about the laboratory is that we have PCR experts in engineering. Uh, lead engineer Elizabeth Wheeler has helped with the assays and identifying some of the, the details that we have dealing with these small pieces of DNA. Bioinformatics, which we only need a small amount of bioinformatics, but the bioinformatics expertise for other biosecurity applications are at the laboratory. So it's a resource we can pull a few days of time here and there to identify these barcodes and make them unique. And then production and uh, quality assurance and understanding how the material is made is definitely an engineering slash chemistry materials problem. So it's very unique that we were able to do this at the laboratory with the teams that we could pull together. The innovation, I think, of how the material came up is that there's been people working on trying to identify a method to track particles and to test these systems for quite a long time. And it's a very hard problem and they were coming up with a very difficult solution to solve that hard problem. And I started to think about it a little bit differently. It isn't necessarily that the, you need the perfect solution. You need a solution that will meet all the safety requirements to test these things in the public environment. So once I started to solve the problem for how do you address releasing a material when people are around, it was possible to come up with this innovation to use FDA approved food products, non-biological DNA, and completely turn it on its head. If you think about who innovators are, the primary characteristic of someone who innovates is someone who is comfortable doing things the way that other people don't. And that's one of the oddballs, and I think why you find so many unique people in the innovative space, in startups and in science, because they're really actually happy being told that that's not the best way to do it and having the conviction of their ideas to push forward and come up with something that's innovative. A lot of talking. I'm getting thirsty. Ha, ha, ha.